Hey, hey, folks, this is Blake Wirtz, DB71. Uh, quick, yeah, this one would be quick. A quick video. Uh, what I wanted to do is um, kind of uh, ping back um, Chris Astral Traveler uh, 68. Um, earlier, he did a, a video on Folkways, uh, the Folkways label, and um, I was vaguely familiar with it you know I, I had heard of the the label but I never paid attention to it and when I saw all of that world music and all of the uh, the, the the folkish and uh, traditional stuff that 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 label represented just by the pieces that he had in his collection and the 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 kind and uh, interesting words he had to say about the label uh, that that got me very intrigued um, and so I kind of jokingly said um, Hey Chris, is there a book on that? And uh, that was because he had just recent—I mean, previous to that—put uh, together a video um, about library records, and he hold he held up this awesome-looking book on library records. And you know, I know there's a lot of books on a lot of different things, but library records, a book on library records. Okay, so you know, out of the blue, I said, "Hey, show me your Folkways book, man." And uh, he actually said he hadn't heard of anything, and so of course I on the internet, and guess what I found? Wah! World of worlds of sound. So Chris, I wanted to show you this. I got this a few days ago, um, and but but I was wanting to wait on something else. Wah! A book um, about Mo Ash. Um, I guess it's kind of a bio a, a biography and history of Folkways uh, records combined. Uh, but let's let's get back to the first one. So uh, yeah, I found this book, World of Sound, online, of course, um, and it is subtitled uh, "The Story of the Smithsonian Folkways." Folkways ends uh, eventually, um, as I understand it, uh, kind of got um, delivered to the Smithsonian. And uh, they they now carry uh, a combined label, the Smithsonian Folkways label, and they still are uh, providing a lot of what Mo Ash, uh, the founder and uh, proprietor of Folkways, that they're providing a lot of his stuff, um, making sure that it's available. I think that was one of the one of the agreements of the deal um, was that. The Smithsonian Folkways combined entity would would guarantee that the stuff is available that he had collected and provided over over the many years. Anyway, I'm I'm learning about the story, um, but what I really wanted to do was show Chris and others, hey, this book is out there and it's it's fascinating. Uh, I'm going to try to like flip through this. I've probably read only about a, a fourth of it so far, but I couldn't wait to show it. Um, this Oh, that's my bookmark. This particular book, um, it's it's written chronologically, uh, but they're focusing different chapters on you know major major uh, periods of of the label, and it's very fun and easy to read uh, because it's broken up into such great sections. Get my bookmark back here. Um, but it's full of cool pictures of, of what's going on or what went on. Um, a lot of the artists, um, a lot of the album covers, um, et cetera, et cetera. So this was a very, very cool book. Um, I'll say a little bit more about it if I quit dropping my silly bookmark. Um, there it is. So um, it's written by... Is written by Richard Carlin, C A R L I N, uh, World of Sound. Uh, Collins is the the publisher, and it was published in 2008. Smithsonian Institution. Um, very very cool book. Um, highly recommended if you have any interest. Excuse me, any interest in in that in the Folkways label. The other book um, is called Making People's Music, Mo Ash uh, and Folkways Records. Um, this um, is more of a, like I said, biography and history of, of Folkways. This is uh, 
published by Smithsonian Institution Press. Um, it was done in 1998 um, and available from the Smithsonian. Um, I got, I, I actually ended up, I bought them both from Amazon, but the Worlds of Sound, I think, actually came from some other third party seller, but this came directly from Amazon. Um, haven't gotten into this yet. It's a, a whole lot of words. Um, I wanted to do the the, the, the other one first um, just to kind of get my feet wet into what's going on. That way this one will make more sense to me. But very fascinating man. Uh, he really believed, uh, Mo Ash, he really, he really believed uh, in what he was doing. And of course you had to, uh, to release music and stand behind music that major labels um, weren't even interested in. I mean, even even in the 50s, uh, 40s and 50s, if you weren't going to make money for a, for a label, they had no interest in you, uh, regardless of, of what your cultural um, significance uh, was. Um, it's always been the same. It's all about money, right? Um, so, Chris, yeah, I wanted to show you that, and I I, I quickly went through my collection to see if I had anything to show and I found one thing uh, I was hoping I had more but I found one piece uh, I can't remember if you had this one or not uh, uh, Caribbean folk music uh, two record set um, let's see Folkways Library 4533 um, and as as Chris pointed out you know very simple labels um, kind of a it's, a it's a box set but you know for two records I'm not quite sure um, why they went this far with it um, I've learned that the reason why um, Mo decided to keep the uh, the labels and packaging so so simple was because he was kind of a, a very early purveyor of the 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 print on demand or the publish on demand kind of guy I mean he'd do up a run of records a small run you know I'm talking 400 to 500 records and when he ran out he'd do another run of them slap some slap some very cheap labels on a simple box or whatever and he would be restocked um, so he was um, very very uh, frugal in in how he presented things but the one thing that he didn't uh, snitch on um, was uh, well let me let me show you the uh, the very simple label there um, it's my understanding this the label actually didn't change that much through the years maybe some colors and font differences but this gen they generally stayed the same and uh, I think this is a, 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 it says copyright 1960 so I, I've got to believe this is early 60s release here but one of the things he did not snitch on uh, was liner notes uh, again as, as Chris showed uh, very extensive liner notes on on what you got um, so you can you can read about the different tracks that are that are on the records uh, often there are lyrics translated lyrics or at least um, some kind of um, explanation of what you're hearing and maybe the instruments and things like that very very cool stuff so yeah I have uh, I have one piece in my collection and uh, Whenever we get to our resolutions videos, uh, I'm, I, I will resolve to uh, try to focus more on getting some some folkways and uh, uh, none such explorer stuff in in my collection because I think it's I think it's fun to just hear some stuff that's way out in the sense that it's just not music that you hear that often and and it's, it's entertaining um, to to learn uh, from from whence our music came. Uh, being a classical lover, I guess you wouldn't be surprised uh, that, that I find it interesting. So there you go, Chris and the rest of the vinyl community. Worlds of Sound. Uh, very cool. I, I, I highly recommend getting it, even if you have no interest in folk ways music or folk music, traditional music. It's very cool to, to read about what this man Mo Ash did and what he believed in. Uh, Man, uh, it'd certainly be cool to try to pull something like, like what he's done off again in today's world. Um, anybody want to help me do it? Yeah. 
PM me if you do. Leave me comments if you don't, uh, or not, or do, uh, whatever. Um, anyway, until uh, until next time, um, you guys take care. Happy holidays. Uh, I'm going. I'm planning to try to put together another video tomorrow. I'm working on uh, the uh, Big Star 1000s uh, obsessions. I've been thinking about. I've been assessing about it. Uh, which which pieces to show. And I've also been thinking about Dwayne's uh, 300 subscriber um, thread slash contest thing. So um, working on that there, and in, and certainly I'm enjoying seeing what what other people uh, have put together in their responses. So take care, guys. Drive carefully. Uh, stay warm. Stay cool. David, 85 degrees. Actually, a friend from Florida told me yesterday that he had to turn his damn air conditioning on. What the heck, <laughs> God. Uh, anyway. Um, I got sweaters on here in Charlotte, so it, it's still not it's still not very uh, very warm up here. So anyway, I'm rambling. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.